Welcome back. So we are continuing along with the time trial adventure editions for eight blue coins in the uh, world one and two zones. In the previous part, we did the start of this world. We're going to cap this off today and also go through the rushing rapids. Now, I'm kind of grumpy at the moment because I just recorded this whole video and when I stopped, my microphone apparently had broke. So this is actually like, this is actually take three. But I did a very long take two of this whole video that's now just been deleted into the bin for a reason that I cannot identify. So fun stuff, but let's run through it. Now, in the Kingdom of Fungus, uh, we obviously have kind of a complicated level where there's like an upper path and a lower path at one point. There's a lot of opportunities to fall into the swamp and start dying. And the whole checkpoint system interacts with this in a really interesting way, uh, which we will get to in time. And I was wondering how many like choices the devs had to get us off the beaten path. Because the truth is, this level's actually really short. Even like in Trib, this level's really short if you're making a beeline. So we'll see what they go with. Uh, at the very start, I forgot to get the flag. I ran ahead and I burned a little bit of the foliage down so I can now return to him. Now that's another side to this, which I never talked about in the other video. Um, but you can actually go through a whole course, burning down all of the flowery stuff, killing all of the enemies that might be an impediment to you, and then returning to have like a cleaner run. And that's like a legitimate thing that I'm sure the devs kind of didn't want. In the previous video, I talked about how one of the architects of the box really did these streams and talked about uh, many of their ambitions and things that would have come. He confirmed that there was going to be a PvP mode for the Super Adventure Box and also a time trial mode. So this is kind of like a shadow of what they might have originally been wanting to do. Um, and I'm sure that the full featured version wouldn't have had that weird interaction where you can go through early. Anyway, that coin I just got is really cool. That's one of my favorite coins in all the zones, really. Because it's exactly the style of, okay, here's a coin completely off of the beaten path as far as tribulation mode is concerned and normal mode is concerned. Even this coin here as well, making us come back onto this weird branch. Those other modes don't make you come here, but this one now does. And I like that. I think that that works perfectly in this kind of form of... Uh, action adventure platformer that is so reminiscent of all those old PlayStation 1 games. The one that always comes to my mind is Toy Story 2 to anyone who ever played it. And it's just nice to get people to go to those areas. I'm well aware that, as we showed in the previous series, there are like a lot of hidden chests and things that you, you can use if you want to go there. But when the bauble system is, is rewarding you more for just spamming through the levels rather than actually digging up chests a lot of the time, you know, it kind of changes the balance of how much we do them. They feel like a more formal part of the game now. So this checkpoint was a really interesting one because the next coin is right there. It's really obvious. Again, I'm going through this thing where it's like, where's the next coin as you're trying to do these technical jumps? That coin is really obvious where it is, but not obvious how to get to it. You could do that bouncing mushroom that's down there, and I glimpsed that a second ago. Or you can do this jump from the sloped tree. I warn you guys, if you're using my footage as like a guide for yourself to see how to do these... Uh, that sloped jump is a lot harder than I just made it look. I was actually amazed that I managed to get it there. But it worked out. And so coming through here, we obviously have the double checkpoint. The double checkpoint, of course, uh, being a problem where if I now fail, if I mess something up, and I try to die to reset it or whatever, if I hit the wrong checkpoint, I'd always be on the floor. Or if I hit the right one, then I can always return to the top. And that can get kind of complicated. Generally speaking, you want to reset this by clicking the X on the top right of the UI to bring the reset pop up. And by resetting, you go all the way back to before the first coin. But we have more uh, checkpoint shenanigans to go over later. Realistically, on this level, you want to be on the high road. There's a lot of coins up on the high road. I think it's obvious why ArenaNet did that, because it's the more punishing and interesting area. Including this final coin all the way over here. And that's it. Eight coins. And the time it took me there is 2 minutes 48... Isn't that quicker? And I was I was three seconds slower than Puma there, damn it. Isn't that three seconds... Isn't that quicker than World 1? Like, it's a short level, guys. It's it's amazing. You know, I imagined recording these videos with you all, and I imagined they'd have, like, really long timestamps, but not really. And yes, that was my first, com uh, you know, full completion, and we got gold. So there's no dud run to, to show you guys here. Um, lots of chests with lots of bubbles, obviously, to collect on those. I really feel like... Oh, I've talked about this so often, but I really feel like if you use my technique when it comes to adventures and time trials, which is you try it, and then if you feel like you made a big mistake, you just instantly reset, and then you try it, and you just reset. If you do it my way, where you throw a lot of runs away because, you know... You don't want to deal with the question mark of whether you're even successful or not as you complete the run. 
I feel like you should come out of that on a first completion with silver. Because you should have like a solid run at the end of that. But not like a really refined one. And, and then there's like a whole other phase where you get to try and go to gold. But in Guild Wars 2, it tends to be if you play adventures with that mindset, you end with gold very quickly most of the time. You know? I think bronze should be for people who just 100% wing it. They go in there and they, they take their first run and they run it down the line to the end. But, uh, you know, you can do quite well. I will actually say of, of World 1, Zone 1 is definitely the hardest. Definitely much more tightly tuned than these zones. I actually feel like these other two, I could have fallen or died or made a serious mistake and still had enough time as a buffer to come out with gold. Really. Anyway, so that's just a bit of a review of World 1. Uh, obviously here I'm killing the, the, the frog. I got a super weapon, yay. I was mostly doing this just because I, um, I I don't think I'd done my daily here yet. And I was wondering if maybe it was a daily. If the time trial is taking you to the end of the zone, then why not go for it? I will note that not all of these time trials are full course length ones. Something we're about to see in the rushing rapids. Let's cut ahead. You guys don't need to see this. So the rushing rapids. A particularly long level that is in two or maybe even you consider three distinct parts and as i was going into this i was wondering you know how does like the frogger section feel on under time trial because there's a bit of rng in there um and you know will they delay the time trial till super late in the level they actually don't they have the time trial right here at the start which again is one of those big open world areas with a lot of stuff going on and my full playthrough for the uh, you know the regular world you'll remember me hanging around here for ages and this is where they actually set it. What I did there as well is a nice little technique where I turn the adventure on, glimpse around to see generally where the coins are, and then just refresh it. Which is how I knew to come to the left here, because I just scanned the horizon basically, and grabbed that. And basically I'm just kind of jumping around in almost the trib route, but towards where I just saw those blue coins. Like here I turn around and I realize there's one all the way off over here. So I quite like what ArenaNet did on this one. They're encouraging you to go to this whole checkpoint that, again, is one of those massive sections of the level that's kind of skippable. Uh, even in tribulation mode, because you can do that, that ramp jump that I talked to you guys about last year. So, yeah, you can uh, come up here. They'll push you through. And you might be noticing that I'm getting a lot of coins already. I'm like, r I can see the start of the level. I I'm super close to it. And I have half of the coins. I have four out of eight. So, yeah, they do an interesting thing here where they're not asking you to do the whole thing. They're not asking you to participate in Frogger under time trial. They're not asking you to do the raft section, which I'll come back to in a second. They're just giving you this little platform bit. And in a weird way, this is now one of the easiest. They make it a short time trial, so they could, you know, a bit more technical, so they could be a lot tighter with the time. And we'll see how they do with that. But in terms of actual, like, stressing you out because you've gone on a really long run and you could mess it up now, you've got to go all the way back to the start, they, they really don't want to do that. They just have you do these jumps here and sort of explore the opening areas. It would have been nice if they take us into some of these secret waterfall caves because I think those places are really awesome. And this coin's pretty interesting, I suppose. Having us go on these rocks on the right, which traditionally were just being used to stop people fall all the way down that waterfall but now have like this double purpose of also being a place you want to go to to get one of the blue coins. Probably the hardest jump in this time trial is the one coming up in a second that's totally avoidable, but I was stressed out and scared that I shouldn't, which is uh, this one here where you can make a direct jump like this and I fail it. And worst case scenario, that crocodile has actually respawned and you get hit a lot. You don't have to try that jump that I failed. It's obviously a time save. You can go around the outside of the pillar and you'd be a bit higher up. But I go for it again. I feel like it's sort of a point of pride there. And I grab that. Turns out to be the last coin right there. So even though I messed it up, look at that. I'm a minute under gold. Like Arena Net, this is world two now. Arena Net could have made that a lot more challenging. I genuinely think this is the easiest one in the game. And it's, anything in the Rushing Rapids is fun, because uh, I love the aesthetic of this level. It's just so cool and happy and nice and summery. But realistically, that is, um, if you're looking for like a, a real experience, a bit disappointing. That's the kind of thing where I'm like, you really need to have a platinum time on there or something for me to go for, because I feel like I'm going to get my fill. So I'm going to keep playing the level along just for a moment here, because there's something else going on that I think is quite interesting. First of all, what that time trial has demonstrated as a concept is that in theory, 
the devs could have lots of time trials all within the same zone and it would work perfectly because they can have a time trial not cover the whole length of the course it can just be a small section of the course it's like how in path of fire they have an expert course and the master course for the griffin, depending on how upgraded your griffin is, basically. Well, that could have happened here. We could do this raft section, and then after that, they could have another time trial. But I guess that they had just, like, as a system, decided to have one time trial per zone, and they didn't go further. Maybe in future years, we can get eight red coins now, or, you know, as you know, or eight yellow coins, and they would go further with that. So then there's the other interesting thing, which is this raft. And I'm giving you guys a weird view of looking backwards. If you feel a little bit sick because it's going backwards, I kind of want you to. Because I think this is a weird, different experience that I don't often consider doing. Like, looking in the reverse direction. In any case, the raft probably is the reason, I think, that that first time trial is situated where it is. Because what is actually happening here is the raft is stationary and the, the entire map is moving. And you're not. So... When I was watching the uh, developer stream about this, I did ask them a question in chat and they never got around to answering it. But I asked, what would it look like if you were at the start of the zone when someone else went on that raft? And that can't actually happen according to the game's real mechanics because they force you all to be together to progress through checkpoints. And the raft itself is a checkpoint so that you don't get that weird experience. Uh, but you can imagine being in co-op, if that checkpoint didn't exist there, someone would go on the raft what would it look like? Would the whole map zoom away from you? And then what about the collision of all the like environment props? Do they all move too? Or is it just the graphics that move and you'd be left in an empty void, standing on nothing, but still able to navigate the course like normal if you had like some, some savant -like, like understanding of what the whole map was? Like what would that look like? And so somebody actually did say that there have been some videos of Guild Wars 2 over the years that do demonstrate the whole map is moving in a weird way and then you get to the time trials and what that kind of means is that if you beat the raft section and the time trial was asking you to go all the way along when you hit reset you would go back to the beginning but the map wouldn't be there anymore they didn't have any way of moving the map back they didn't have any way of resetting the raft so everything would just be hideously broken so I think ArenaNet realized that, and then they said, okay, we can't do a full length course here. We have to just do a slice, and the slice they picked was the beginning of the level instead of the second half of the level. I don't know why that decision was made. I think the second half of the level probably would have been cooler, because, again, it would have had all the Frogger stuff. But, yeah, that's uh, that's the idea. And uh, just some, some observations, I think. Really, pretty easy for both of these. Sorry about the short runtime on today's video. Tomorrow, though, we are on well, the next two zones for World 2, which are both really long, and both the courses are really long, and oh my god, Zone 3 was a nightmare. I'm sure you guys will enjoy me stinging my way through that. I'll see you for that very shortly. Take care, guys. See you next time.